Hey everyone, and welcome to Elijah Streams. Today is Friday, February 16th, 2024. I'm your host, Kelsey O'Malley, filling in for Steve Schultz as he is away in Uganda this week. We're pre recording today's episode. And in case you missed yesterday's show with Krista Elijah, we shared some amazing photos of Steve and Doreen and the team dedicating a brand new water well in a village and you get to see uh, the beauty of the joy of finally receiving fresh water on the faces of these precious people and I think we're going to show those again real quick just because they're so I mean look at the joy of the Lord I love Doreen's face it's just amazing look at that praise God it's just, it's so, it's so beautiful to see what's going on over there. And it wouldn't be possible without any of your giving. And, you know, clean water is a luxury we so often take for granted. In Uganda, access to clean water can mean the difference between life and death. And we want to thank you for partnering with us to give hope and new life to future generations. Thank you again so very much for your generosity. I pray that you would just see the fruit of giving and the the fruit of clean water to people who've never ever have gotten to experience just walking outside to a pump to get fresh water to cook with to clean with um to wash with. I think being a mom and having uh, a baby and giving baths and I mean, I can't imagine having to use dirty water. So thank you so much again. Lives are being changed and they are giving glory to God. That's for sure. You can donate at ElijahStreams.com slash donate, or you can mail in your gift to the address on the screen. God bless you guys so very much. And thank you. My guest today is the founder of Eagles View Ministry. He is a prophet, an international speaker, and he is someone who every single time I hear him, my faith builds and increases for the supernatural. So please help me welcome my guest, Bobby Connor. Bobby. Well, hello. Hello. We serve a supernatural God. <laughs> yeah, we're absolutely delighted to be with you, Kelsey. This is the day the Lord has made. We're going to what? Rejoice and be glad in it. And I'm telling you, listen, this is the most crucial time in human history. I believe that's absolutely true. I believe this is some of the most crucial time in human history. And look who God's let live. I asked him, I said, what were you thinking? He said, yes, I finally found me a people weak enough to work in. Not weak in morals, not weak in ethics, not weak in character, but weak in our own ability. Without mm -hmm. him, we can't do a single thing, but with him. In him, through him, by him, we're unstoppable. We're more than a conqueror. We're Hooper Nike, super overcomers. And that's one of the things I want to talk to us about. We got to get rid of this stinking thinking. Well, you know, I'm just little old me. No, you're a world changer. The power of the living God is inside of you. Jesus said it this way. Greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. Isn't that amazing? See, the devil would be. He can't harm a hair of our head. We belong to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Isaiah 54, 17 says, No weapon formed against us will prosper. Every tongue that rises up against us, God will condemn it. I'm telling you guys, we're, we're on a mission. We're not here say, just twiddling our thumbs. We're on a mission. We're going to arise and shine and let our light so shine that people can see our good works and glorify our Father which is in heaven. So, uh, Kelsey, I'm, I'm wound up like an eight-day clock. I don't like preachers that uh, mumble and apologize for nearly saying something. You ought to say what you believe and believe what you say or sit down. God wants to teach his people who they are. And you'll never know who you are till you know whose you are. He said, you didn't choose me. I chose you. I ordained you. I sanctified you. I set you apart. And Ephesians 2.10. You ought to read that sometimes. Ephesians 2.10. I read it out of every English translation I could find. And here's what it says. We are his 
workmanship created in Christ Jesus under good works, which God before ordained, we conduct ourselves in them. That literally says God created things for us to do before we were us. Now, I want you to shake yourself and say, I've got purpose. Yes, you do. I I wrote a whole book about it called Master's Plan Divine Design. There's something you can do that no other human being can do because you're divinely unique with God. And I'm telling you, God wants to use you in a marvelous way. I have not seen, ear hath not heard, neither is entered into the heart of man the things that God has prepared for those that love him. Listen, I want you to know one of the one of the great blessings of heaven is every eon, up to every millimoment in, in the heaven, uh, God is going to be unfurling more who he is. We're not going to wow. get, uh, can you imagine the, the in, uh, intrigue of that? Every millimoment. God is unfurling more of his majesty, more of his, wow. his awesomeness. I'm telling you, yeah. this, this thing uh, is so amazing. I have not seen, ear hath not heard, neither is entered in the heart of man. The things God has prepared for those that love him. Here's a great verse. It's Jeremiah 29, 11. I know my thoughts. I think towards you, declares the Lord, thoughts of your success, not your failure. My intention is to bring you to a good end, not a dismal demise. Yeah. God's good. Do you, yeah. one, of my favorite, one of my favorite verses in the whole Bible right now is Nahum, N-A-H-U-M, chapter 1, verse 7. Here's what it says. God is good. A stronghold mm-hmm. in the day of trouble, and he knows those that are trusting him. Aren't you glad? I am so thankful that God's not up there going, oh, never saw that coming. No, he's <laughs> author and finisher, not author and oops. He's going to finish everything he started. Philippians 1, 6 says, being confident of this very thing. He that hath begun a good work in you will continue it until the day of Christ Jesus. He's author and finisher. He will finish what he started. And he that has begun a good work in us will continue it. One of the things we're going to have to do to find out more about whose we are is to get more acquainted with God. The Bible said, Acquaint now thyself with God, be at peace, and good will come to you. So let's Mm. ask ourselves a couple of questions. How do you get to know someone? Mm. Spend time with them. Communicate Mm -hmm. with them. And that's the way it is with God. If you're going to get to know God, and the Bible said, we've got to get back into the Word of God. Oh, listen, here's your great verse. Here he is, Joshua 1.8. Joshua chapter 1, verse 8 said, the words of this book, the law, the Bible, shall not depart from your mouth. You shall meditate upon it day and night, and it'll guarantee you overwhelming success. I tell people, wow. you only a flop, stay out of the Bible. But if you want to have overwhelming success, Joshua 1, 8, get in the Bible, let the Bible get into you. Let me tell you about the Bible. The Bible is not just print on paper. It's, it's not just print on paper. I've got a Bible, and yeah, I'd suggest you get one, too. If you can, get the Amplified Classic. That's the best one I've ever found. Uh, they're a little difficult to find, but Amplified Classic. If you can, uh, get them because uh, I like them. Uh, for, I, I like the fact that they, they, they give you a little bit of insight to the Greek and the Hebrew. And, but yes. anyway, read the Word of God. Get it down in you. And the Bible said, Thy word is a lamp under my feet and a light under my path. Psalms 119. Mm-hmm. Psalms 119 verse 130 said, The entrance, the penetration of His Word gives light. It gives me a mm-hmm. grasp and a comprehension of the ways of God. I, I, mm-hmm. I'll, share, I'll share a prayer with you that every one of us ought to pray over ourselves every morning. Ephesians 1, 17 and 18. I pray that the eyes of your heart will be flooded with revelatory light and you will have a grasp and a comprehension of the ways of God. I want that. Mm -hmm. I want a grasp and a comprehension, a perception, an understanding, an anointing to know what the Word of God is talking about. And the Word of God is a weapon, taking the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. But uh, we got to talk about sometimes. Oh, man. Uh, can you believe this? This is absolutely true. Don't lie in church. Look at Ananias and Sapphira. And the best days of the church are in front of us, not behind us. Listen to Amen. me now. Your spiritual tomorrow won't look like today. God's going to bring us out in such a magnificent anointing on us where it's going to be like it in, is, is there. And if where it says, who is this? 
coming up out of the wilderness, leaning on her beloved. It's yes. going to be the bride, the church, leaning on Jesus. And we're going to have such an anointing. There's an anointing yeah. that God wants to put on his people that's unstoppable, that we can do anything. I can do all things through Christ too. In, it's, it's Philippians 4.13. I can do all things through Christ who infuses inner strength into me. I am self-sufficient in Christ's sufficiencies. Aren't you glad? God would be unjust to give us a task without a touch, an assignment without an anointing. And God has provided the anointing. Everything we need to live godly in this present world is available to us. But the Bible is not just print on paper. It's a person. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory as the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Now, I know we've got some questions and stuff to talk about. But uh, I'm going to tell you an event that happened to me. See, for 29 years, say it, 29 years. Can you believe That's a I'm long 80 time. years old? I'm 80 years old. Listen, I'm telling you, God is good. And wow, uh, I, I've been preaching 55 years. I've averaged speaking five times a week for 55 years. I'm living oh proof. My. Practically perfect. Okay. But I am having the time of my life. What a day to be alive. We can reach the world for Christ. And I'm telling you, we got to let our light so shine that men may see our good works and glorify our Father, which is in heaven. And I am so thankful for the Elijah stream. They're going into all these nations, going into all these homes and hearts. And it's amazing. It's amazing. And that's what we've got to do. We've got to let our light shine. We've got to get bold and brave about winning people to Christ. The problem's not the harvest, it's the laborers. And we got to pray that the Lord of the harvest will thrust forth laborers into his harvest. And I'm so yeah. thankful that they're doing the water programs, the well programs. It is so, it is, it's almost, um, uh, it's almost unthinkable that here we have, we, we treat fresh water like, like it's just uh, something. No, here's, there's people, and it's something you can see coming to fruition right before your own face and your own eyes. But anyway, I'm here to tell you, we're in a time that's amazing. Now, I want to digress a little bit back to December. See, for 29 years on the Day of Atonement, I have a visitation from Jesus Christ. He'll tell me some of the things that's going to happen. And I write it in a book called The Shepherd's Rod. And it goes all the way back uh, for 29 years. And you write it a year in advance. So uh, what I'm about to tell you happened December the 13th. This past December the 13th, I'm sitting there uh, at almost 7, a, 7 p.m. waiting on the evening news to come on in, in my home. My son is there. My wife is there. and My grandson's there. And so we're there. And I'm sitting in my chair waiting for the news to come on. And the Lord said to me, hey, Bobby, do you know what year it is? And I go, uh, well, it's going to be 2024. He said, uh, uh, no, no, I, I'm talking about the year in the Hebrew. That's what he said. I said, no, I don't. I, don't, I, I know it's going to be 2024 in our calendar. But he said, here, here, here's what, the, here's the new year. It's the year of the open door. That's what he told me. He said, this is the year of the open door. And I said, okay, this is the year of the open door. I'm sitting there. My son's there. My wife's there. We're watching for the evening news to jump on December the 13th. And uh, I had a, a, a safe, mm -hmm. a, a safe, a vault, and mm -hmm. uh, it had quit functioning. The lock on it wouldn't work. And for six years, it was, un, uh, you couldn't open it. We had locksmiths out there. We had people and they could not, could not get the thing open. And it'd been that way for six years. So I'm sitting there and the Lord had just said, it's the year of the open door. I said, well, that's wonderful. I'm going to look into that. And then uh, he said, no, I want you to get up and walk in there and open your, your safe. I thought to my, I, I rolled my eyes and I thought, what? Over six years, we've tried everything in the world to open it uh, and it wouldn't open. And he said, get up and go open your safe. This is the year of the open door. So help me, God. I get up, walk in there to where the safe was. And I'm telling you, uh, supernaturally, supernaturally, before you could even manipulate the, the lock on it, it popped open. Boom, just like that. Hadn't been open in six years. And oh inside the... Yeah, it's the year of the open door. I'm wow. telling you, before any codes were punched or anything, boom, the door popped open. And so for, I, I walked back in there where my wife and my son was. And my wife says, I've never seen you like this. I was I was awestruck. I said, you're not going to believe this. And so anyway, 
a, a safe box and it's mm -hmm. real heavy. And so uh -huh. I got it out of there and I hadn't it hadn't been touched by human hands for six years. And watch mm -hmm. this now. I opened that safe box and it had like uh, papers, important uh, papers for uh, things. And uh, mm -hmm. it had some of my wife's jewelry, some of the photographs that she wanted to keep and stuff like that. And I finally opened it up and I had bought uh, way back there. I had bought a Rolex watch, a mm -hmm. Rolex watch. So I pulled out the Rolex watch and the Lord said, look at the watch. I looked down at the watch. It has not been touched by a human hand for over six years. Guess what? It's right on time. It's the same time as my, my, uh, and so my, my son, it's I said, look, look, that's right. That's what the, that's what the Rolex people said. And my, mm -hmm. my son Googled Rolex and, and Googled their uh, service department and said, we've got a watch that has not stopped running for six years and said, it's at the perfect time. It was a perfect, it was December the 13th, the same time. Uh, and so I'm wow. stuck. And uh, Rolex people said, nope, that's impossible. We make those watches where they'll run maybe two days to six days without being on someone's arm. And I said, no, nobody's touched this thing for six years. And it was right on perfect time. Now, this is a spiritual lesson. This is the year of the open door. And God is going to help us to redeem the time. We're not going to lose any time. We're going to make up. And he said, he's going to make sure we're making full use of every moment. I know we think like we think we've lost some time, not with God. I'm telling you, God's going to usher things in that we've longed to see. We're going to see salvations like you can't imagine. The Lord said, Bobby, don't let the church allow one of the greatest tools of evangelism to grow cold. I said, mm -hmm. okay. What tool is that? He said, signs and wonders and miracles. Remember mm -hmm. what the Bible said? And multitudes, that means a bunch, and multitudes believed on him when they saw the miracles he did. We've got to get back out in the highways and the byways and let the mighty miracle working power of God show up in our meetings. And it says when they saw the miracles he did, multitudes believed on mm -hmm. him. And that's what we got mm -hmm. to do. Now, you can't do miracles without the miracle worker. And that's Jesus right. inside of you by the power and the person, the Holy Spirit, but you have received power. And th there's something Jesus said. If anybody else would have said it, I'd go, that could never happen. But here's what Jesus said. These works that I do and greater works than these shall you do because I go to my father. Now, Jesus won't lie. He said, I'm anointing you with this power, an unction to function. That's not a rap song, an <laughs> unction to function. We, God will not give us a, a task without a touch. And so listen, guys, we are in a season okay. of God refiring his people, not retiring, refiring. We need the fire on, of God. Yes. We need the yes. holy radical fire of God. We need to walk into a place in the whole atmosphere changed because greater is he that's in us than he that's yeah. in the whole world. We're world changers. And so yeah. what, what we got to do now is focus on who he is so we'll know more about who we are. We're sons and daughters of the most high God. Here's what he said. You didn't choose me. I chose you. I ordained you. And I'm telling, isn't that amazing? Yeah. Almighty God. It says laboring together as God's fellow heifers. Listen, God chose us to be on his work team. Isn't that amazing? You didn't choose me. I chose you laboring together as God's fellow heifers. I'm telling you, God saw something in you. He saw that you could be very beneficial to the kingdom of God and advancing the kingdom of God. And that's what's going to happen. And so uh, the shepherd rod, this for, for, 29 years now, the one for 20, uh, 28, uh, on, for 28, uh, it, it was about uh, the verdict of God, the gavel of God, and it mm -hmm. was really amazing. I'm telling you, and so that was here, last year's, just, that was last year's, uh, last year's Shepherd's Rod. Yeah, 2023, and it was a Shepherd's Rod volume 28, but this is volume 29. Oh, man, it, it is really something. And it's pretty amazing when you get into it. The, the, there it is. That's that's the one you can pre-order. And uh, it, we promise you this. You pre-order it, and we'll send it to you as soon as we can get it uh, packed up and mailed to you. Uh, we sure will. Because the Lord told me, he said, the Shepherd's Rod for 2023 it's mm -hmm. going to be a catalyst for, for 2024. 2024 is going to be the time when God helps us to fulfill what happened in 2023. 2023, I got swallowed by a glory cloud. 
And I'm inside a glory cloud and it's spinning around like this. And with every revolution, the, the angels are writing strategies on the wall and it's so fast and so whirling. I said, Lord, I don't think I can maintain this. He said, Bobby, I'm not putting it in your mind. I'm putting it in your spirit. And now here comes uh, this year, this 2029, 20, this uh, Shepherd's Rod, volume 29, 2024. Mm -hmm. here's, what he, here's what he says, man. He said, you tell my people that if they'll study the, the, the one for 2023, 20, uh, it'll mm -hmm. give you access. And, and 2024 is going to show us how to ascertain, how to bring into reality what God promised us there in 2023. I'm telling you guys, this yes, is a time to advance. This is a time. And here's what he said. He said, we're going to have to teach the people to be builders and battlers. Workers and worshipers. Mm -hmm. And I'm telling you, uh, we've got to have people who will be like Nehemiah, building with one hand and battling with the other. Pretty well, the wow. walls are down, just like it mm -hmm. was in Nehemiah day, Nehemiah's day. He heard yes. that the walls of Jerusalem was down and the people were, the, were, the people of God were being scattered and, and mishandled. And he says he wept. He got on his face and wept. And I'll tell you mm -hmm. what, that's what's going to happen. We're going to have such an urgency of the hour and we're going to get involved in becoming who God wants us to be. And so mm -hmm. the shepherd's rod, the title here it is, the shepherd's rod for this volume 29 is the year of the open door. Builders and battlers, a time of recovery, uh, a time mm. of recovery, restoration and victory. Now is the time for the saints to take possession of the kingdom, accessing, here it is, accessing your divine authority. And boy, you need mm. to get it because God has put in you divine authority, power for purpose. And the Bible said, uh, mm. uh, it says in Daniel uh, 32b, but the people, Daniel 32b, but the people that do know their God, they will display strength and they will take action. I'll tell you, it says we'll do mighty exploits. And so God's going to teach us how to how to bring into reality what he taught us there in the shepherd's rod uh, for 28. So 29 shows us how to, at, at, to bring into being what he promised us there. And here's what he said. The angels came. They sounded like Huey helicopters, mighty warring angels. Whew, wow. I am glad they're on our side. I'm glad that they're here to help us. Psalms 91, 11 said they're, they're here. They encamp us around about us. They cover us. I'm telling you, most of us, would, I'm just talking as fast. I'll tell you <laughs> why I talk fast. I used to buy television time and I'm cheap. So I figure if I talk real fast, I get my money's worth. But since uh, Schultz and these guys are paying for all this, <laughs> I'll just slow down. But no, I love. No, Steve I Schultz like the, the faster you talk, Bobby, the more we can get into a show. I like when you talk. No, go oh, for it. I do. I talk fast and I talk long and loud. But listen, that's not bad. Uh, I, I had some tragedy when I was growing up playing football, cut my tongue off. What? Yes, playing football one Friday night. I'm there running, trying to catch this guy that's about to make a touchdown. I leaped to catch him just in time for his heel to catch my chin. And back there in those days, the the helmets were a bit different than they are now. And instantly, now this is this is I'm a way sidetracking. Instantly, my whole mouth felt like it was full of jello because I'd cut my tongue off. Uh, yes. And so I run to the bench and we, this is, we, this is, we can't say what the coach said, but he said something like chucks, I got to carry you to the hospital. So they carried me to the hospital and the uh, it's Friday night late. And uh, there's an old guy there and uh, he says, well, I got good news and I got bad news. I say, I do, I do. You know, I said, what news is that? He said, the good news is I can sew your tongue back on and, so he sewed my tongue back on without any anesthesia at all. Who, what year but was anyway, this? Huh? That was way back there when I was playing football for Brownsburg Bears. Yeah. Isn't that amazing? Oh my, sewed my tongue back on. And see, oh it works. Gosh, I get I get paid to talk. And so isn't that amazing? <laughs> But see that I think the devil saw that one day that God be I'd be using my tongue as mm -hmm. as, as a taught one, but and so he tried to cut my tongue out. But anyway, they wow. sewed it back on, and then and uh, here you are. Uh, I'll, I'll tell you the last. There, there's a doctor he sewed it on and and all that kind of stuff, tied knots in the the thing. And then he's standing there. He goes, "Well, I got real bad news now." I go, "Hey, yeah, what's that?" He mm -hmm. said, "It's going to hurt worse when I take him out." That's what I said. Well, I can't, I won't say exactly what I said, but I said, I got news for you, buddy. You ain't taking them out. I took them out myself. He said, how'd you do it? Well, I self-medicated. 
I self-medicated oh, yeah. and bit the bit the nipple off and pulled the things out myself. But it works. I'm, I've been I've used it uh, five times a week for over fifty something years. Isn't that amazing? But I'm here to hear tell you about the open door. The opportunity before us is unprecedented, and we're going to see changes. And we're, this is the year of the open door, the battlers and the builders. And we're going to learn how to. We're going to learn the strategy. Now the first the first implementation of the strategy is we got to get together. The Bible said a house divided cannot stand. A nation divided cannot stand. The devil knows that. So what has he been working day and night, endless and tireless, trying to get the church divided, trying to get families divided, trying to get our nation divided? But we're going to come together. We're going to come together as one. One can chase a thousand, two can chase 10,000. And watch us come together and start working together, having no ambition, having no uh, we're in this thing to win it. We're in it to see uh, see the things of God happen that he wants to happen. Yes. And it's a time of restoration and recovery. And it's a time that we possess the kingdom. And here it is. We learn to access our divine authority. Oh, mm -hmm. all power and all authority has been given to us in heaven and in earth, the Bible said. So we're going to shake ourselves and say, listen, I am here on a mission. I, I'm after I'm after the things of the devil. I'm going to bind it. I'm going to bring it to be absolutely naught and nothing because greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. That's what it says. We're more than a conqueror. Just to be quite honest with you, the devil is more afraid of you than you are him because wow. he knows who you really are. He knows that you're unstoppable, that you're mm -hmm. a child of the king, that God's warring angels are with you. The Bible said they're ministering spirits sent down here to aid us who are the heirs of salvation. I wrote a book about angels, and I'm telling you what, they're real. Oh, on the day of atonement, these warring angels came and they stopped above me and they started screaming. I mean, screaming and vibrating the earth. They were screaming, sound the alarm, awake the warriors. The first thing they were screaming is divine urgency, divine urgency, sound the alarm, awake the church. And he says, mobilize the church. And the word mobilization is a big word. Now we got to get out of the, out of the sideline to the front line. And we got to get the gospel out into the street, the highways, and the hedges. So uh, yes. I'm excited about the days that we're in. I'm excited about what God has said. He said, tell the people they're spiritual tomorrow. won't look like they're today. And uh, I'm telling you, God is going to come on his people in such a dimension. We're going to find mm -hmm. out that as we're praying, he'll answer. I'm telling you, he's Amen. a prayer answering God. I, Amen. I, I, I wrote a book. I wrote a book called uh, Audience with the King. And I'll tell you how I wrote this book. This is absolutely true. The Lord appeared to me and he was standing less than three feet away from me. And mm -hmm. he was looking straight into my face and he said, and his face was sad and he's not sad. He's the happiest man ever lived, according to the Bible. And there he was with his, his face was uh, solemn. And here's mm -hmm. what he said to me, Bobby, my people don't like to talk to me. He said the least attended service in any church is prayer meeting. And then he said with a twinkle in his eye, he said, but I'm going to give you a phrase, a statement that will turn prayer from a drudgery to a delight, from a duty to a desire. I said, mm -hmm. I want it. He said, I'm going to tell you what real prayer is, and it'll change people's whole perimeter about prayer. Here's what he said. You tell my people what true prayer is. True prayer is an audience with the king. Oh, man. So I got into the Bible. I started studying every verse I could find mm -hmm. about prayer. It said Jesus yes. would spend all night in prayer. And I'm telling you guys, prayer is powerful. Prayer can mm -hmm. do anything. And we have not because we ask not. Ask and you shall mm -hmm. receive. Seek and you shall find. Job 22, 28 says, and you shall decide a thing. Then you decree what you've decided and the Lord will establish it. And the light of his favor will shine upon your pathway. While we're talking about favor, let me throw this verse out to you. Psalms 84, 11. Psalms 84, 11, God says, he'll be a sun and a shield to us. No good thing will the Lord withhold from those that are walking up right. Here it is. He will give us present day favor, future glory, honor, splendor, and heavenly bliss. We stay on target wow. and on, on step with God. We're going up. We're, we're, we're not yes. going to stagnate. We're not going to be satisfied with of where we are. We're going to push on. We're going to go on. We're going to go to one to, to one dimension of glory to the next. That's what Amen. it's all about. And we're going to behold him with an unveiled face. And we'll be caught up from one dimension of glory to the next. Here's your another verse Amen. about God. Psalm 65, 11. Psalm 65, 11 says, 
He crowns this year with his goodness. And everywhere his chariot wheels roll, it drips with fatness or plenty. So I'm telling you, God wants to show himself that he's who he says he is. El Shaddai, the God that's more yes. than you'll ever have need of. Isn't that good? Yes. Aren't you glad mm -hmm. God's not up there going, oh, man, if you'd have got here last week, but I'm a little tapped out. No, he's God. <laughs> yes. He's all powerful. Amen. He's got everything we need. And he wants us to come to him. And, and rest in him. Uh, one time the Lord said, you tell my people that you cannot, you cannot medicate anxiety. You have to repent of it. See, it says, be anxious for nothing, but with prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God that surpasses yeah. all understanding will keep your heart and your mind through Christ. Now, Amen. peace is powerful. How do we get peace? Isaiah 26, 3. Isaiah 26, 3 says, thou will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed upon thee. Trust in the Lord Jehovah, for in the Lord Jehovah is everlasting, never failing strength. So that's what we mm -hmm. got to do. Romans 16, 20, talk about peace being powerful. Romans 16, 20 says, the God of peace will crush Satan under your feet shortly. That means now. Aren't you glad? So stay in peace. How do you do it? Stay focused on God. The Bible said, if you look out at all the tragedy, all the chaos, it says men's hearts failing them for the things they see coming. But look higher. I'll tell you, yeah. we've got a redeemer. We've got the we've got the savior. And I'm telling you, uh, my people are for lack of knowledge. Let's get into uh, understanding more about who God is. And if we'll know more about who God is, you'll know more about who you are. And he wants us to be bold and brave. Uh, and I like that. I like the fact that God wants us to be bold and brave. You know why? Because who's in us? The Almighty God. Almighty. Look at little David, the shepherd lad, member. Yes. He goes out there and there's a giant roaring. You come at me with a sling. And, but he said, no, I'm, I'm coming in the name of the Lord. And that, that's Amen. it. We're going to fight our battles in the name of the Lord. And we're going to stand in God. And in God, we're unstoppable. So anything else? There's a lot of stuff we could, we could talk about. I know there's if a you, lot of stuff. Got, when you yeah, were talking about going up up higher, you know, immediately I remember didn't Bob Jones always talk about Bobby um like about going above like the snake line? Didn't snake that line, yes. He used to That's say, exactly right. right. That's exactly right. He said, uh, you know, an eagle can fly so high up in the mountains till the snakes can't get high. They can't get that high and, and, and survive. And that's where we need to do. We need to soar with wings as of eagles. I see a 40, 28 through 30 says, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They'll mount up with wings as of eagles. They'll run and not be weary. They'll walk and not faint. And so that's what we got to do. We got to move on up. We got to come on up. And that's what the Lord is doing. This is the year of the open door. Revelations 4, verse 1. Revelations mm -hmm. 4, verse 1 says this. It says, and I heard a voice. And I looked. And I heard a voice. And it said, come up here. And I looked. And there was a door, a gate, a portal standing open in heaven. And again, the Bible said, behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in. And yeah. so what, we've got to have uh, an attentive ear to hear the voice of God. That's what it says. It says, John 10, verse 3 said, my sheep hear my voice and they follow me said so they'll flee other voices but they'll follow the lamb and that's what we got to do we got to realize there's an open door and after this i heard a voice that said come up here and i looked there was a door a gate a portal standing open in heaven we can go higher and we can be filled with a, a, a stronger than a stronger anointing than what we're walking in i promise you this we're going to see my mighty signs and wonders god still he the bible said jesus christ the same yesterday today and forever Jesus still. Yes, yes, he does. He does. He cast out devils. And he says, as my father sent me, now I'm sending you. As he yes. is in the world, so are we in this present world. So don't say, well, that was for another generation. No, it's for us. We're sons yeah. and daughters of the most high God. And God will see to it that we come out the head and not the tail above only and not beneath. I'm yeah. telling you, God's on our, on our side. And we're going to, we are going to have to battle and build just like mm -hmm. Nehemiah's day. The first thing they did um, was they wept and they got the attention of God. And he was, he was, Nehemiah was serving a king, but yet the king uh, had compassion and sent Nehemiah away with everything he'd need to help reconstruct the walls of Jerusalem. 
Isn't that something? I'm telling yeah. you, God has the provision if we've got the heart to step out. I'm telling you, greater love hath no man than this, and a man lay down his life for his friends. Let's get busy about taking back what the devil's stolen. That's what it says. If you catch a thief and the devil's a thief, you can command him to pay back sevenfold. And so we're, we're going to receive, we're going to see family members restored. We're Amen. going to see uh, sick people raised up out of the hospital beds. Oh man. You, uh, you've seen God, things come even back to your own house that you left somewhere like in different countries, right? Yes. Yes. Here, here it is. Uh, it, Bill Johnson preached about it and made it famous, but he's got stacks of, uh, uh, stacks of testimonies about it. Bob Jones had given me a little bitty knife, a little pocket mm -hmm. knife. And mm -hmm. it was, it was not some big, it was just a regular little pocket knife, but it was precious to me because Bob wanted me to have it. I'd carry it around with me in my shaving kit and in the hotels, I'd peel apples and or slice pears or something like that. And I loved my little knife. And then right before I'd leave, I'd wash it up and put it in my shaving bag. And then when I'd get home, I'd un start unloading my clothes on the bed and I'd get my shaving bag out and unzip my shaving bag and put my knife up. Oh, man, I unzip my shaving bag and I realized I did not get my knife off the, the table in the in the hotel. And it's a it's a knife Bob had given me. And, oh, I've just bummed me out. And so mm -hmm. I, I'm just, I'm, I'm just, here's what happened. I just, here's what, here's what happened. I'm standing there by my bed, disappointed in the fact that I did not get the knife. And I, I screamed out, Hey, I want my knife. When I hollered, I want my knife. Something appeared in the air above my head and fell on my bed. Guess what it was? My knife. Isn't that amazing? And That's uh, the you, most yes, my, my knife fell there and bounced and people all over. I've told the story. Bill Johnson preached about it. And listen, decree a thing and it'll happen. Job 22, 28. And you shall decide a thing. Then you decree what you decided and the Lord will establish it. And a lot of his favor will show your pathway. Uh, I've got testimonies of one guy. Uh, he was a, they made all oh, very expensive jewelry and they mm -hmm. lost a piece of it. And he told me, Bobby, I took the safe out three different times, couldn't find it. And then he said, your message about, hey, I want my knife. He said, I screamed out, hey, I want my necklace. He said, Bobby, so help me God. He said, I walked back over there, pulled the safe drawer open and there laid the necklace. Thousands of dollars for a necklace. Isn't that amazing? Yes. I'm you, God, God wants cares. to be he does. He cares for us. He really does. Uh, uh, have you ever got some stories in your heart that you uh, are almost too precious to tell? Here's one. Yeah. Now, this is my, my son I'm going, I'm going to be talking about is 50 something years old now. But anyway, when he was little, uh, I, uh, he was always out in the yard playing around. And so we'd moved into a brand new uh, house. My wife mm -hmm. and I, Parsonage. And uh, so he had, he had caught him a turtle, a, a little turtle like, like this cute little thing and he put it in a shoe box and the mm -hmm. turtle ate his way out of the shoe box and escaped into the house the new house oh. with new furniture new drapes new this new that and so uh my wife she said bradley con that's his name bradley con if that turtle gets gets to stinking in this house i'm gonna give you a spanking oh, uh, yeah. no. and so uh I, I'm back in the study listening to this dilemma that's unfolding. And so I decided I saw my son go to his room. And so I'm, I'm coming down the hall and he's there, he's there at his bed. He's just a little bitty toe headed boy. And he's there at his bed and he's got his head down like this. And here's, oh. he, he don't even see me watching him. And he says, Jesus, mama's real mad. She said, I've got to find the turtle. I can't find him. You can. And so oh, I thought, wow. okay. So I didn't want him to see me uh, spying on him, praying. So mm -hmm. I went on uh, around the corner and he comes out and so helped me. We had turned that house upside down, looked on the sofas, looked on the drapes for that turtle. He walks back. Oh man. He walked out of that room into the living room and here came the turtle. Just walked oh, out there just like gosh. this. And my little boy picked him up and he looked up at, he looked up at the Lord and just like, you know, it, isn't that wow. amazing? Wow. Yes. I'll tell you, we got a God. We got a God that's concerned about a little bitty boy and uh, a, a turtle loose in the house. 
And I'm wow. telling you, you can't get in a dilemma that God doesn't have the answer. And we've got to learn to cast all of our care upon him. He cares for you. And greater love hath no man than this. Jesus loves us. And what yeah. happens sometimes, the devil will talk people into getting into some sin or something that's uh, not not good for them. And then they, they go around with shame and guilt. The Lord mm -hmm. sees all of that. He said, come yeah. unto me. It says, take my yoke upon you. Learn of me. I'm meek and lowly in heart. And he said, we can cast all of our, he said, cast your burden, cast your sin upon him. And he'll put it as far as the east is from the west, never to remember it again. But I'm so thankful we've got a loving God and a powerful God. And he wants to, he wants to cause us to be more like him. Don't you want to be more like Jesus? Yes. I do. Oh, man. And I think I, I of the get prayers so too, Bobby, of just the, the, the purity of the prayer of your son. Yeah. And yeah. if we could understand that, that yeah. God looks upon the heart and the, yeah, that is so right. I mean, when we can pray all these, you know, like the, the story in the Bible, Bobby, where it's the tax collector and the, um, mm -hmm. the Pharisee, right. And he's all like, yeah. well, I'm glad I'm not like him and I'm righteous. Yeah. And the tax collectors over there broken and, and weeping before yeah. the Lord. Um, and just the, yeah. the, his heart was rent before the Lord. And I think that for us too, like God turns his yeah. face towards us when we genuinely have a prayer, even yeah. if you're five or if you're 105. Yeah. Yes, that's so true. Kelsey. And it, uh, it says that uh, we can come to him any in any condition and he understands everything about us, you know, and he can make, he can make a, a tragedy into a triumph. Uh, isn't Amen. that amazing? I've seen yes. him. I've seen him do it, and uh, he he can uh, he can deliver people. Oh man, uh, I, I love that. I love the fact that there's not a pitfall so deep that the grace of God can't pick you up. One of my favorite verses in the whole Bible is, "I waited patiently upon the Lord. He inclined unto me, heard my cry. He brought me up out of a horrible pit, out of the miry clay. He set my feet upon a solid rock. He established my goings. He put a new song in my heart, even praise unto our God. Many shall see it in fear and shall trust the Lord. And I, I my life was that way. I was in a horrible pit. I mean, but anyway, God's got a plan and uh, he, he, he is, he's going to work out his plan and his plan is good. I know my thoughts, I think towards you, they're good. Now the devil will lie to you and say, God, don't think about you. He's lying out his teeth because Psalms 139, it says, all of our days are written in God's book before we lived a single one of them. And then it says this, God's thoughts towards us are weighty and precious and they're 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 more numerous than the sands on the seashore god's weighty precious thoughts that he thinks wow. about us are more numerous than the sands on the seashore so don't you ever let the devil say uh, god don't care he does care he's got every hair of your head Amen. numbered every Amen. every heart every heartbeat uh, counted i'm telling you he is a friend that does what sticks closer than a brother. brother and so pretty amazing isn't it it's amazing so, bobby if you would take a second would you just pray right now because i just feel such a compassion from the I lord will. right now it's just a sweet such a sweetness of, of the presence i do of the i i, I want to pray and I, I want every person to open your heart and just receive what jesus has for you it, uh, your past can be past but don't let your past keep you from embracing the joy and the victories of the future. Father, in the matchless, mighty name of Jesus Christ, you said whatever we ask in prayer, believe in, it'll happen. Lord, I pray for wayward sons and daughters that have just gone astray. I pray, Lord Jesus, that you will do like you did with the prodigal son. You'll cause him to come to themselves and realize there's a better life than what I'm living. Lord Jesus, I pray you'll draw, draw them back. You said the offspring of the upright will be mighty in the earth. So, Lord, I pray for everyone listening and watching today. I pray that you will encourage them to cast all of their care, all of their anxiety, all of their burdens, all their worries upon you because you care for them. Lord, you'll make crooked ways straight. And I thank you, Father, that your word is a lamp under our feet and a light under our path. Bless the people now in the mighty, matchless name of Jesus. Holy Spirit of God, have your way. Make us more mm -hmm. like Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. And Father, oh. I pray for 
those listening that have lost something or that can't find something in their house that they hear the testimony today from Bobby, Lord, that you would um, ignite faith within them to cry out to you, God, and to say, Lord, help me to find this or Holy Spirit, show me where this is or God, I want this back. Lord, let me have that back. Um, Father, because you know it's so precious to them, God. And I just pray that testimony would ignite a faith inside of them to believe once again um, of the God of the impossible. Lord, those who maybe used to believe in miracles and signs and supernatural events, because maybe in the the beginning of their walk, God, they used to experience that. But it's been a while since they've had an encounter, since they've had a dream or a vision or something, God, that has left them in awe. Father, I pray, Lord, would you give them something that would leave them in awe again? Would you restore their childlike faith to look upon you and just say, my God is the God of the impossible. My God is awesome. There is nothing too hard for God to do in my life. Lord, I just pray that they would look at you in this time and in this season as the God of more than enough. Lord, you parted the Red Sea, that they walked on dry ground. Lord, you are a deliverer, our savior, our helper, our comforter. And Father, I just pray that people's hearts would turn back to your son. And Lord, that they would understand that you have good plans for them, God, and you are who you say you are. Lord, restore that childlike faith in us again today. And Father, we bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Listen, Bobby. one of the things one of the things we've got to hang on to right now is that God is going to move us from the mundane to the supernatural. And I'm telling Amen. you, uh, he's going to show up and show off. And we're going to be in awe of what he does. I mean that. Uh, he is going to show up and show off. And it's going. he's going to fill the heavens with the glory of God. And so I'm very excited to be part of what God's up to during these days. And Amen. let us not grow weary in well-doing. We're going to reap if we faint not. And uh, let's get a, a, a real uh, understanding that God is for us and uh, no one can be against us. It doesn't matter who's mm-hmm. against us because God's for us. And yes. so we're learning more about who we are and who he is and what he's promised. Yes. Yes. So good, Bobby. And I know you've written a couple books. You mentioned your angel one and your um, divine design, but I think we also have um, the, um, your other book. Um, the it's Dread Champions. My mind. Dread Champions. Yeah. Yes. Dread there Champions. Is. Dread what Champions. is that book about? Oh boy, it's about raising up men and women to be warriors for the Lord. And it's it God said, study the names of the mighty men of David, and you'll find out the character and the conduct I intend for my end time army to have. And I'm telling you, the dread champions, we need it. We've got to become warriors for the Lord. And so we we wrote about the dread champions that the men that followed David. And uh mm-hmm. I'm telling you, we're going to have to have a heart to engage the enemy. We can't sit on the sidelines. And so study about Dread Champions and find out what's available to us. It's really, really amazing. 800 of the enemy in a bean field with a sword. It said he clay, he held onto the sword till it stuck to his hands. And I'll tell you what, uh, Dread Champions, the Bible said in Jeremiah, uh, it says, the Lord is with me as a Dread Champion, Jeremiah 20, 11. The Lord is with me as a dread champion. Therefore, my persecutors will not prevail. They'll stumble and fail and, and they won't be able to uh, to prevail against us. So God wants you to wow. become a dread champion, a mighty warrior, a bold, brave servant of the Lord. Yes. Amen. Good. I think that Good. we we have to know we have the victory and there's. Yes. It, it rises within you like this righteous indignation for God yes. rises within you. The closer you get to God, it's like just it rubs off on you because it's the Holy Spirit within us. You know, when we yes. focus on yes. the Lord, it just he rises up within us. It, you can't help yeah. it but become a, a warrior for Christ. And we, I've exactly read Dread right. Champions. It's it's a great book. My husband loves it, too. Um, It Good. just sparks us again, ignites us again, Bobby. Yeah. All your books. um do that. There's such, you're Thank such you. a faith builder in the body um, of Christ mm-hmm. and an amazing prophet. And you've prophesied incredible things. Like, um, what was, what was the story, Bobby, where all the ice melt, right? All the that ice melted. 
Yeah, that was in the Ukraine. I prophesied about the Russian and and I went over there and preached about it. And mm-hmm. uh, to, I, and so the behind the hotel, there was a I, there was a lake full of uh, ice and they were ice fishing on it. And uh-huh. I said, to prove this is a true prophetic word in the morning, all the snow and ice will be gone. Sure enough, the next morning, all the snow and ice was gone. We was in a flood. The The weather changed and brought a warm rain and, and uh, pretty wild. But that was a uh, you, you can Google. You can Google the, the the message I preached over there about the war with R- Russia and the Ukraine. Uh, I was preaching in Sunday at a Jazz Church, and you can Google it. About wow. uh, it's pretty wild, but That's God amazing. wants to show up and show off. We were in a meeting in uh, Mississippi, my wife and I, and uh, we were there, and uh, we was preaching about covenants. And mm-hmm. guess what happened? Nine rainbows got out in the parking lot. And nine's a number of covenant. Rainbow is a sign of covenant. And people ran out in the out in the uh, oh, parking lot and had their pictures taken in these rainbows. Isn't that wild? Wow. I like it when God shows up and shows off. And uh, he can do it. All we got to do is just give him the glory. And uh, the Lord told me one time, he said, the greatest form of treason in ministry is to take the gifts I give you to win people to me and use the gifts to win people to yourself. He said, that's the mm. highest form of treason in ministry. Wow. So wow. I believe if we'll just give him the glory, he'll give us the power. Yes, I totally agree, Bobby. I'm so happy you came on and joined us this Friday. What a great way to end the week. We've had an amazing week. You come on here and yes. encourage us. And we're so thankful yes. and grateful for you. Thank, Thank you, you for so very much today. Um, you, you guys don't want to miss Monday. I will be on with Johnny and Low, And it's kind of like a yeah. part two to the um, show we had last Monday. If you guys haven't gotten a chance to watch that one on Monday, make sure you go back because Johnny's going to uh, expound a little bit more on what he shared about the message Good. from God on the Super Bowl. So you make yeah. sure to Uh, tune in on Monday. Have a blessed, amazing, awestruck weekend with God. Love you so much. See you next week. Bye.